and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
fact be. The Lord has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing worth. Send thy Holy Ghost and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? Brothers, brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. We'll read Psalm 37, response. <laughs> do not fret yourselves because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make righteousness as clear as the cloud, and the trust will be dead. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fear yourself, but the Lord. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. A reading from the book of Corinthians. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. 
It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good, good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the name of the loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. People say things like, you know, so-and-so is just such a nice person. And most people, certainly church people, followers of Jesus, want to be thought of as nice people or at least that we're trying to be nice people. But you know how it is. Sometimes even the best of us can find ourselves thinking, 
I'm a nice person, but I'm a nice person, but I have limits. Do that to me too many times. The spouse an opinion that I find abhorrent, oppose, get in my way for something I want and think I should have. And well, I kind of come to feel that you're my enemy. It's not hard to be people. It is not hard to be nice to people who play nice. As our Lord says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? If you are good to those who are good to you, so what? Even sinners, even people who aren't trying to follow God's way are capable of that. What matters then, what matters then is how we treat people who don't love us and who wrong us. Our Lord says, love your enemies. I check Google and Google says that the definition of enemy is someone who opposes you in any way. What you do or think or, or, or want. Someone who opposes you. Under that definition, if you and I look at our everyday lives, and into our hearts, we probably find instances in which we think of and treat other people as enemies. <clears throat> For instance, perhaps it's someone in your workplace or an organization who is in competition for getting into the boss's favor to be in line for a better position, more power, more money. Or sadly, sometimes, yes, it's church folk who want to get the rector's ear or the senior warden's ear to push their agenda. Or what about those other drivers on the road? How about them? Or the people in the supermarket pushing those carts? Some of them not watching where they're going, some of them pushing their carts and looking at their cell phones at the same time. And it looks as if they might collide with you. They're scaring you, or they're just getting in the way of where you want to go. Or maybe it's being in an argument with a friend or a relative, or yes, even a spouse. And it almost feels like you're competing, like you're enemies. Or people who just seem to ignore us or look down on us. We can come to see them as opponents, as enemies. And our instinct is to stop being nice and to push back and to get back at them. You probably heard that cynical saying, don't get angry, get even. But getting back at someone doesn't make things even or end the problem. No, when we hurt back, we tend to hit back harder, more harshly, with greater force. And so the situation escalates, the hurt grows, and the relationship is even more afraid. So our Lord teaches us when someone gets in our way, wrongs us in some way, we are not to retaliate. If someone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. Don't answer an insult with an insult or hurt with a hurt. And by doing that, we can keep things from getting worse, from escalating. The word from Proverbs 15.1 comes to mind. A soft word turns away wrath. Sometimes our refusal to hurt back, our silence or soft word 
can so surprise our so-called opponent that they calm down, de-escalate, and the rift begins to heal. Our Lord says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Love your enemies. Now, our Lord is not talking about manufacturing warm, fuzzy feelings for those people who have hurt us. No, love is deeper. It is more an act of the will that no matter what we are feeling, we remember God's love for them and for us and desire to do good for them and act for their good if we can in any way we can. That kind of love is a reflection of God's love for us, all of us, even the worst of us. God is love through and through and has nothing but love for us. No matter what our sins, hurting others and ourselves, no matter how we resist God in our lives or for how long, God keeps looking upon us with infinite, tender compassion and mercy and forgiveness. And no matter what, God never ceases to do good to us in ways we don't even know about. Willing and working to heal our brokenness and to bring us to himself and to new life. That is the way God looks on us. The way God looks on all of us, including those whom we might see as opponents, as enemies. And so our Lord says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Do good to them. Our Lord knows how our human hearts and minds work. That we, that how we treat others can change them and us. As the great English theologian C.S. Lewis wrote, if you injure someone who has hurt you, you will find yourself loving them less. But if you do them good, you will find yourself loving them more. If you injure someone who has hurt you, you will find yourself loving them less. But if you do them good, you will find yourself loving them more. Do good to them. Even some small courtesy, like letting them go first, or a smile, or some sign of respect, lending a hand in some way, perhaps just some small act of kindness. Bless those who curse you. Speak lovingly and kindly to them. And pray for those who abuse you. Pray for them, not in the way of telling God how to fix them, but simply holding them and yourself in the presence of God, who looks on you both with infinite compassion and love. We are to look at others and ourselves with compassion, for they, like all of us, are broken, wounded in ways we may know nothing about, and sometimes people behave the way they do because something in the situation has triggered some old wound, some old hurt, some fear. And even they may not understand why they behave the way they do. So our Lord tells us, do not judge. You don't know all the facts. Do not condemn, which is contrary to love. 
for we do not and cannot know and understand others as only God does, who understands them and us completely and looks on them and us with infinite compassion and love. Do not judge or condemn, but rather forgive. Forgive as God forgives us. When there is injury, both the one who is injured and the one who did the injury are bound. They are bound by a burden of guilt on the one side and on the other by resentment and maybe hurt and hate. They're bound, stuck, unable to bridge the rift between them and to move on in life. But in forgiving, both are released. Yes, forgiving can be hard, really hard. It can only come from striving to love and by the grace of God. It can be hard, but it is the only way to freedom and healing and peace. We've seen it so many times in those courtroom scenes where at the end of the trial, a relative of a person who was killed confronts the person who did the killing and forgives them from the heart. And they and their family are freed from something of the sorrow, the hurt, the anger, so that it does not, it does not infect and shadow their lives in the future, at least not as much. And the killer is free from at least some of that burden of guilt and can have some peace of heart and hope for the future. Like the people our Lord was preaching to that day, and all of us ever since, we are sinners. We hurt one another. And we hit back and fall into a cycle of revenge that solves nothing. We struggle with one another over what is our fair share. And we can come to condemn those we disagree with and get divided and hate the other side. But that is not the way. As a society, a people, a nation, and elsewhere in the world today, we are living through a great a, a, a time of great stress and division, of inadequate justice for some and great disparities in wealth, division over how we are to live together and what matters and what's true. Division leading each side to give way to disrespect and insults and hate. That is not the way. And always, but especially in a time like this, we followers of Jesus are called to bear witness to another way, the way of Jesus, who teaches us to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse us, Pray for those who accuse us and turn the other cheek and not retaliate against them, but forgive. The way of Jesus is the way of life and peace and the beloved community that God wants for each and every one of us. Because God knows and loves us and does more good for us than we can know with boundless love and mercy and compassion.
Extend if you are able. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father, and the Kneeling, let us make our intercession to Almighty God. In peace, we pray to thee, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our For this community, for the nation, and the world. For all the work of justice. For the just and proper use of thy creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop. For Trey, our priest, and for all bishops, including Francis, Bishop of Rome, and Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those on our monthly prayer list, and especially today for Joan, Ken, Jared, Michelle, Becky, Lee, Claudia, Scott, Molly, Liz, Barbara, Marianne, Sophie and Trey, Scott, Rachel, Lauren, Tim, Brenda, Mang, Solomon, Nick, Dot, Barb, Chet, Brittany, Debbie, Logan, Todd, Sharon, Anna, Laura, and Barbara. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul's Levittown. We pray for our elected officials, Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local officials. Hear us, Lord. We thank thee, O Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the faithfulness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays, Thomas Landel, Margaret DeLong, Megan Cleric, Jeffrey Bodie, and Nicholas Minnick. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries, Joel and Arletta Ferret, and Joseph and Cheryl Parisi. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. 
Lord, look graciously upon thy church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We will exalt thee, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially departed parishioners and Christian martyrs throughout the world, that they may have a place in thine eternal kingdom. Lord, let thy loving kindness be upon them. May so know, Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of the Lord, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our sins and sins, which we have done for our sins and our sins. By the love of the Lord, and the sight of my heart, for both of you will trust you in thy heart. We do rise to your back, and our heart is sorry for these our mysteries. And remember us to them as the duty of some of us, the burden of them is entitled. Have mercy upon us, and have mercy upon us, most merciful God. For thy son, our Lord, our sake, forgive us all that is ours, and grant that we may have a good life. In the honor of the Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, with his great mercy, has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord is all with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A warm welcome on this chilly morning. Yes. I was here with you the day after Christmas, but of course, there weren't too many of you here that day. <laughs> so I think I'll introduce myself again. Uh, I'm the Reverend Raymond Harbour, uh, retired priest of the Diocese of Bethlehem, and uh, I live at Penswood Village since November of 2020, uh, and it's good to be here uh, with you once again. Are there any announcements? Yes? The profile committee would just like you to know it's not too late to participate in the survey. Um, they're compiling um, the information, but if you haven't done the survey yet, please um, contact Ruth or Jen or whoever contacted you initially. If you've been forgotten, please contact one of us and we will be happy to take care of you. And the profile committee is now cataloging the information and uh, preparing the profile. Well, God bless you all in that work. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
mercifully send Jesus Christ, thine only begotten and eternal Son, to share our humanity, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and there made an offering of himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed unto suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks unto thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. 
we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We offer unto you these gifts. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy Holy Spirit, that they may be for thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, blessed Luke, and all thy saints into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. And give us our trespasses, as we Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore,
of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, beloved, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Yes, I know I'd have to hear. Yeah. I was going to send you a text. I, I found that when I was leaving. Oh, I'll get it tomorrow. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> 